Hello, I'm Zonal Fear and welcome to the Tech Quest. A couple of weeks back, one of my favourite tech YouTubers, Random Gaming in HD, uploaded a video called an AMD CPU for just two pounds. I was curious. Game performance on the processor was frankly awful, and I thought to myself, it can't be that bad, can it? So I hopped over to eBuyer and bought the same CPU. By the time I paid for delivery, it cost me a little under a fiver for a brand new AMD processor on the AM4 platform. It arrived a few days later in an absurdly oversized box. But what did I get? This is the AMD A6-9500E. Released in 2016, the A6-9500E is a dual-core processor with a bonus feature of integrated graphics, something that would not be available on the AM4 platform under Ryzen until nearly a year and a half later with the Ryzen 3 2200G. For a while, the only way you could build a basic PC on the AM4 platform was through these A-series processors. The 9500E is a lower power version of the A6 9500 with lower CPU and GPU clocks to meet those lower power requirements. Base speed of the 9500E is 3GHz, but it will spend most of the time reaching its turbo speed of 3.4GHz for all of the good that, that seems to do it. It sounds like an okay deal on paper though, right? A dual core processor with integrated graphics for next to no money, but all is not as it seems. It would be easy to mistake these processors for some kind of early Ryzen derivative, or even an early Ryzen processor before a rename, but that's not what these processors really are. You see, beneath the heat spreader lies something entirely different, a processor based on the same technology as the FX series processors, complete with all of that architecture's shortcomings. On release, the A-series APUs weren't very well received in general, and after using the processor for a little while, I could see why. Actually getting the CPU to the stage of being able to test it was an ordeal in itself. First of all, these A-series APUs will only work on certain AM4 chipsets. Anything even remotely modern, such as B550, will not run these processors at all. I had to seek out an old A320 board specifically for this video, and even then it was still not easy. Using the old Gigabyte A320 board here, the BIOS needed flashing as it was on one of the few versions that didn't support these A-series APUs, so immediately I had to flash the BIOS. After updating the BIOS, the system point-blank refused to boot at its rated memory speed of 2400 MHz, using AMD's own branded RAM, and it had to lower the speed to a box standard 2133 MHz just to get the system to post. With the system finally loading up, a start into Windows from an SSD took an absurd 33 seconds, from screen to desktop, making this possibly the slowest processor I've tested so far. And finally, updating the Radeon's integrated graphics drivers was a similar headache, with the driver install failing three times before successfully completing. To top this off though, there are fairly old legacy drivers, and as with other Radeon legacy drivers I've used, external video capture caused a screen to have this strange colour grading tint to it that wasn't present when directly connected to a monitor. Something I've experienced on older Radeon discrete GPUs with legacy drivers too. So yeah, we're off to a really weird start. Here's a full spec of the system I'll be testing today, a very modest setup with 16 gigs of DDR4 clocked in at 2133, on a Gigabyte A320M board, powered by an overkill 600 watt era core integrated power supply and running Windows 10. Let's get this over with. Fallout 4 is up first. At 720p and using the game's lowest settings, Fallout 4 was just entirely unplayable. There were very, very brief moments where we saw upwards of 25 FPS, but for most of its playtime it was just utterly unplayable, with the CPU amazingly being the bottleneck against the integrated graphics here. Borderlands 2 at 720p low was a similar story, but we did at least see some playability here. I want to be clear that I am absolutely using a choice cut in the footage and that this really was the absolute best the 9500E did in Borderlands 2, but I guess you could just about manage it despite the frequent stuttering. Left 4 Dead 2 was almost the best performing lot of the games today. At 720p medium, we did actually manage something playable here and the frame rate remained high enough that it wasn't totally miserable to actually play. It's still all over the place, don't get me wrong, hence my decision to not even bother actually benchmarking these, but it's just about got by in my playtime for it to be acceptable, I guess. Fallout New Vegas. Oh boy, you know it's bad when even New Vegas struggles. At 720p and using the medium preset, New Vegas was playable, but there were so many stutters and frame rate drops that I think I'd rather be playing this on a Pentium 4. When it wasn't stuttering, the frame rate was kinda okay, but again the consistency just isn't there to really take you into the Mojave. The original Dead Island actually ran okay. At 720p low, the 9500E managed to be somewhat consistent here, with a frame rate that hovered into the 40s for most of the time, but again, dips were frequent and really took you out of the moment. Looking back at the footage in review, I actually think that Dead Island was the most consistent of all the games tested in performance today, just pipping Left 4 Dead to the post, so there's that. Payday 2 at 720p low was another game that was just a stuttery mess, 
Frequent freezes and a low frame rate make this pretty much unplayable, and I wouldn't be happy at all playing on this kind of performance. It's frankly just nowhere near good enough, and I cannot believe that this is an AM4 processor. I tried to test Saints Row and Dying Light, but they just crashed with no signal errors being displayed before booting me back to the desktop. And finally, Metro Last Light. At 720p low, the 9500E delivered something kind of playable, but again with a wildly variable frame rate that just made it too inconsistent to actually enjoy. Indoor areas would see around the 50fps mark, but larger outdoor areas such as the one here would see the frame rate drop into the low 20s, something I don't even think the console versions of the game did on the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. I did try adding an RX 460 card for discrete GPU testing on the A6 9500E, but a few seconds after taking this screenshot right here, the system froze again, and at that point I think I'd had my fill of the 9500E. If there's any interest for me revisiting the 9500E with a discrete GPU, I might retest on request in the future. <laughs> And that's a wrap. This has been a fairly short review today, so I will also keep this short. The 9500D isn't a very good processor, and even in basic day-to-day -day tasks, actual usage of this CPU can best be described as miserable. I've tested a good number of dual cores over the years, and this one has easily been the worst I've tested in recent times. Desktop performance is poor, and gaming performance is also very poor. These chips were universally slammed at the time of release, and time has not softened that well-earned reputation. I want to say that I am actually a big fan of AMD. I have several Ryzen-based machines in daily use in my household, and they are all excellent performance for the money I paid. Ryzen has proven itself to be a capable, competent, well-priced platform that millions of people every day use without issue, day in, day out. But these A-series chips are not the same and I would highly recommend you look for absolutely anything else if you're building something on the AM4 socket. An Athlon 3000G will run rings around this all day, and they can be found used on the second-hand market for around a tenner, and that's a dual core you'll want to use on AM4, not this. This will merely disappoint you with mediocre performance and poor game performance. I've been Zenal Fear, this has been the AMD A6 9500E, and thank you very much for watching the Tech Quest. Until next time, bye bye.